Salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching the very first edition of Malaysia Tonight with me, Brenda Lepong, in our leading stories. Malaysia secures 170 billion ringgit worth of investment commitment from China. And also, Cabinet agrees to establish a committee to deal with contract doctors issue. Malaysia has secured a record 170 billion ringgit worth of investment commitment from China. Now, the amount, the biggest so far from China, is from a total of 19 Memoranda of Understanding MOU sealed between businesses in China and Malaysia. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said this showed the confidence of the investors in the country. He said this when announcing the news at the Malaysia-China Business Forum, which was attended by some 1,000 business leaders from both countries held in Beijing today. The Prime Minister is currently on the last of his three-day visit in Beijing to deepen the strategic bilateral political and trade relationship with China. China remained Malaysia's largest trading partner for 14 consecutive years, with total trade of 110.6 billion US dollars, 488 billion ringgit in 2022. Apart from attending the Malaysia-China Business Forum, Dr. Sri Anwar today was also accorded an official welcoming ceremony by the Chinese government in conjunction with his visit to the country. The Prime Minister was greeted on arrival at the East Hall of the Great Hall of the People by Chinese counterpart Li Qiang. Afterwards, the two leaders proceeded to a bilateral meeting during which both of them discussed the efforts to further strengthen the Malaysia-China ties. Dr. Sri Anwar and Li Qiang then witnessed the signing of three MOUs between the governments of Malaysia and China involving the Ministry of International Trade and Industry as well as the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. After that, the Prime Minister together with his delegation attended a breakfast ceremony hosted by the Chinese Premier at the Great Hall of the People. RTM will continue to play an important role in disseminating national agenda to the people using fresh and new approaches. Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fazil said RTM is currently the connecting voice between the government and the people despite the existing challenges, including the evolution of the current media landscape, such as the use of social media, as well as the ever-changing preferences of listeners and viewers. Explaining further, Fami said RTM, which has six TV channels and 34 radio stations, will remain relevant as a reliable media platform despite those challenges. Bila masa kita berhadapan dengan media sosial dan juga perubahan pola dan cita rasa pengguna, pendengar, penonton. Dan saya percaya dengan ada KP, Encik Suhaimi, Dengan pengalaman yang beliau ada, dengan sokongan daripada pasukan, kita dalam bulan-bulan dan tahun-tahun yang akan datang akan menyaksikan perubahan di RTM yang positif. He said this after appearing as a guest on Selamat Pagi Malaysia program in conjunction with RTM's 77th anniversary celebration. In conjunction with the occasion, RTM also launched two main plans centered around the 2021 to 2025 strategic plan and the RTM transformation plan 2021 to 2023 involving four main pillars including radio, television, new media and engineering. This is to ensure that the dissemination of information is always at an optimal 
level and is accepted by the people as a whole. In a related development, Fahmi said RTM is also an important media platform that provides impartial news and information to the public. This will help to ensure the delivery of a fair democratic process in the country, especially during the election period. Bagi saya, uh, kita inginkan satu suasana yang sehat, yang uh, uh, orang kata pertarungan demokrasi yang sehat uh, tanpa elemen-elemen uh, fitnah sebagainya. Tapi menyampaikan pandangan, uh, mengangkat hujah masing-masing dan biar rakyat memilih ya, dengan dengan baik dengan untuk, untuk pilihan mereka untuk lima tahun ke depan. Ya, jadi saya percaya RTM akan mainkan peranan yang sangat penting. The minister stressed that as a mainstream media, RTM also has the responsibility of encouraging the people to be involved in the democratic process. The cabinet has agreed to establish a high-level committee to deal with the issue of contract doctors, which is currently a hot topic among the public. Health Minister Dr. Zaliha Mustafa said the committee will comprise representatives of several ministries and agencies, including the Chief Secretary to the Government, Tansri Muhammad Zuki Ali. There were rumours of a strike by contract doctors on 3rd to 5th April. Dr Zaliha, through a statement, informed that the Health Ministry is of the view that a strike is not the best solution to problems related to the medical profession or any other professional scheme. On the contrary, she said the move needs to be considered carefully because health service is a critical service involving human lives and the well-being of the people. She also noted that the government has from time to time responded to the problems raised by health workers, including creating permanent posts, sponsoring specialist training or advanced training, time-based promotions, opportunities to be promoted to special grades, and creating grade UD56 for medical professionals. She said the ministry is always aware of the rising requests and ensures that they are being examined in accordance with the current issues and given appropriate solutions based on the country's economic capabilities. The Education Ministry, MOE, will hold the special recruitment of new teachers in the near future to address the current shortage of teachers nationwide. Deputy Education Minister Lim Hu Ying said the ministry is currently short about 4.49% or 19,431 teachers due to mandatory retirement, voluntary retirement, promotion, study leave, unpaid leave, resignation and death. She said various efforts and measures are being taken to address the problem, among which the Ministry is planning to hold special recruitment for new teachers. Okay, guru subjek yang paling kurang adalah guru bahasa Inggeris, uh, bahasa Melayu, pendidikan Islam. Keseluruhan data uh, keseluruhan negara kita memang kekurangan guru. Okay, semua negeri pun ada kekurangan guru. She said this to reporters after opening the public institutions of higher learning IPTA exhibition series 2 year 2023 in Georgetown today. On the event, Lim, who is also Tanjong MP, said the exhibition aims to provide a platform for secondary school students, especially Sijil Pelajaran Malaysia and Sijil Tinggi Pelajaran Malaysia school leavers to learn more about the opportunities provided for them by the government and agencies. And more to come, KKD through MCMC directs all telcos to block any URL link in SMS. But first, the exco lineup of the Blaka state government, which will be appointed, needs to reflect the composition of the unity government. According to Barisan Nasional BN Chairman Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, thus the Deputy Prime Minister, who is also AMRO President, said discussions will be held with Balaka Chief Minister Dr. Sri Abdul Rauf Yusuf first before any decision is made. Walaupun kita tahu bahawa di Melaka Amno dan Barisan Nasional memperolehi tiga perempat suara majoriti di negeri berkenaan. Namun alangkah baiknya jika 
Kerajaan Negeri Melaka dapat menggambarkan kebersamaan dan juga perkongsian kuasa dengan adun-adun yang telah dipilih oleh rakyat daripada parti-parti yang berada di dalam kerajaan perpaduan di peringkat uh, uh, persekutuan. He said this to reporters at the Ramadan 1444 Hijrah Tadarus Al Quran Padana Ceremony for Bagandato Parliamentary Constituency Level today. Dato Sri Ahmad Zahid also said the political stability in Malacca will help the unity government win the upcoming state elections in six states. Earlier, Dato Sri Ahmad Zahid, who is also Bagandato MP, inaugurated the Para Level Gera Rahma 2023 Jom Masa Bubolambo at Hutan Melintang Public Housing Area. The program, organised by the Department of National Unity and National Integration, was carried out simultaneously throughout the country today. The Higher Education Ministry, MOHE, does not prohibit any individuals or parties from entering and conducting any events in the universities in the country. However, its minister, Dr. Sri Muhammad Khalid Nordin, said an approval needs to be obtained from the university management before the implementation of the program, apart from complying with the stipulated rules and conditions. Elaborating further on the matter, Dr. Sri Muhammad Khalid said discussions also need to be held between the related parties so that universities' affairs and activities can proceed smoothly without any disruptions. Tetapi seperti kita sedia maklum, uh, untuk masuk ke kawasan uh, universiti ini, kena maklumlah kepada pihak uh, pengurusan universiti. Uh, mungkin ada ada breakdown communication apa semua. Jadi uh, dalam hal ni uh, saya uh, dari segi kementerian kita memang harap supaya kedua-dua pihak boleh berjumpa dan diaturkan uh, supaya dapat uh, dibuat uh, sekali lagi. Datuk Sri Muhammad Khalid was commenting on the statement by Mua Member of Parliament Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman that said he was prohibited from entering University Technology Mara, UITM, to attend a dialogue session with the students. The Ministry of Finance, MOF, will consider an immediate allocation of 45.5 million ringgit to upgrade the Customs, Immigration and Quarantine CIQ complex at the Sultan Iskandar Building, BSI, to address congestion. Deputy Finance Minister 1, Dr. Sri Ahmad Mazlan, said the approval for the allocation will be considered after the application is submitted through MOF, Economic Planning Unit, EPU, and several agencies, including the National Budget Office, NBO. Dato Sri Ahmad, who is also one of the committee members representing MOF in the Special Cabinet Committee, said four things that need to be improved and that there is a need to implement them immediately to solve the congestion on the country's entry route. He hoped the allocation could be approved this year because the congestion was seen as a major problem. This year, because the issue of this has become a issue itu sebab ada jawatan kuasa kabinet dan uh, uh, segala perkara yang boleh dipersiapkan segera kita akan persiapkan segera uh, terutama dari segi peruntukan-peruntukan he said this to reporters after visiting the complex today. The Pontian MP explained that the funds will be used to improve access to the waiting area for heavy import and export vehicles, to combine and build a covered shed for inbound and outbound buses, and to provide facilities for passengers, drivers and tourists, such as cafes, surau and toilets. In addition, he said the allocation also includes the establishment of a contra route, which is the opening of 12 lanes. The Ministry of Communications and Digital, KKD, through the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, has issued a directive to all telecommunication companies, telcos, to block any URL link in short message service, SMS. His Deputy Minister, Tio Ni Ching, said the instruction was issued to prevent consumers from becoming victims of online fraud. She said several online scams happen when users click on the wrong link and after giving their personal information, they find themselves being scammed.
MCMC telah juga keluarkan satu arahan kepada semua syarikat telco supaya dalam SMS sekarang tak boleh letak URL kerana banyak penipuan dalam talian itu berlaku apabila seseorang pengguna dia salah tekan URL yang tidak boleh dipercayai. Jadi kalau you tersalah tekan URL tu mungkin you akan dibawa kepada satu laman web yang palsu. She said this to reporters after appearing as a guest on IFM in conjunction with RTM's 77th anniversary celebration today. However, she said the directive would come into effect in phases and hoped that the companies involved would be able to implement the directive soon. Meanwhile, speaking on RTM's 77th anniversary, Dio said, RTM, which has great potential, will continue to be a loyal friend to its audience and will ensure that listeners and viewers get the latest news fast. 1st of April this year marks over seven decades of RTM's role as Taman Setia Anda, catering to all ages as it continues to be the voice between the government and the public through six TV channels and 34 radio stations. Malaysia's key economic indicators continue to grow modestly in January 2023 despite ongoing geopolitical conflicts and ratcheting up of inflation in the global economy. Chief statistician Datu Sri Dr. Mohamed Uze Mahirin said the country's total trade noted a slower growth of 1.9% in January this year to 207.5 billion ringgit from 203.6 billion ringgit in January 2022. Datu Sri Dr. Mohamed Uze said exports rose by 1.6% to 112.8 billion ringgit, while imports grew 2.3% to 94.7 billion ringgit. On the other hand, he said Malaysia's trade performance in February this year grew 11%, or 20.3 billion ringgit, to 205 billion ringgit from February 2022. Export rose 9.8% to 112.3 billion ringgit, and imports growth continued to outpace exports growth growth, increasing by 12.4 percent to 92.7 billion ringgit. From the perspective of the price, he said Malaysia's inflation in January 2023 recorded a slower increase of 3.7 percent from 3.8 percent in December last year. He noted that the growth in inflation was still driven by three main groups, namely restaurants and hotels, food and non-alcoholic beverages, as well as transport. On the foreign front, Mexican authorities suspend Ciudad Juarez prison operation over 39 inmates' death. Stay with us. As Malaysia and Vietnam celebrate 50 years of diplomatic ties this year, both countries remain assured in the mutual commitment of strengthening their strategic partnership and continue to strive towards peace and prosperity. In a joint press communique, Malaysian Foreign Minister Datu Sri Dr. Zamri Abdul Kadi and his Vietnamese counterpart Bui Tan Son said, notwithstanding the challenges faced during the years of relationship building, Malaysia and Vietnam continue to focus on the opportunities to bring bilateral and regional relations closer together. Both countries also further reaffirmed their commitment to deepening political and economic cooperation. Towards this end, they remain committed to implement the Plan of Action 2021 to 2025 under the strategic partnership between Malaysia and Vietnam. The statement said both foreign ministers will also strive to promote and conduct regular high level engagements and strengthen bilateral cooperation mechanisms. Malaysia forged diplomatic ties with the modern day Vietnamese state on 30 March. 1973. A roof collapsed during a heavy metal concert in the U.S. state of Illinois as tornadoes spawned by a monster storm hit multiple states across the South and Midwest. The roof of the Apollo Theatre in Belvedere, Illinois, collapsed during the sold-out Morbid Angel concert as winds reportedly reached 145 kilometers per hour. Of the 260 people inside the theater, when the storm hit, one person was killed and 28 were injured, five of them severely. The city's police chief described the scene after the collapse as absolute chaos. The collapse happened about 30 minutes into the concert, and the first call to emergency services came in as mass casualty collapse. 
More than 20 ambulances were reportedly called to the scene. Video posted on social media showed a large section of the roof close to the stage had fallen as workers tried to free people from the rubble and those trapped called for help. Tornadoes are common in the United States, especially in the center and south of the country. A week ago, a tornado swept through the southern state of Mississippi, killing 25 people and causing extensive property damage. Mexican Security Minister Rosa Isela Rodriguez announces that the operation of the detention center in Ciudad Juarez, where a fire killed 39 people, has been suspended. Mexican prosecutors said Friday that they had arrested a migrant accused of starting the fire, along with three immigration officials and a private security guard. Authorities have accused the people in charge of the facility in Ciudad Juarez of doing nothing to evacuate the detainees. An arrest warrant was outstanding for another guard wanted in connection with the tragedy. She did not identify the migrant accused of starting the fire in a cell where he was being held with 67 other men, apparently in a protest against deportations. According to the authorities, the deceased were 18 Guatemalans, 7 Salvadorans, 7 Venezuelans, six Hondurans and one Colombian. The injured were 10 Guatemalans, eight Hondurans, five Salvadorans and five Venezuelans. Several of the inmates remain in serious condition while others rely on mechanical ventilators. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador repeated his previous demands for the United States to invest more in Latin America so that migrants do not feel the need to leave their countries. Washington's investment in Central America paled in comparison to the billions of dollars that it has allocated in military aid for Ukraine following the Russian invasion. In tonight's sports highlight, Yannick Sinez stuns world number one in Miami Open. Stay with us. We begin our sports segment with local football news. Rangano FC, TFC won against Kelantan United FC 2-1 in their Super League match last night. TFC head coach Tomislav Steinbruckner said he was satisfied with the performance of his charges in the match and that the victory was a morale booster for them after having lost in their two previous matches. The Croatian says the three full points collected at their home turf was very valuable as TFC were able to rise up three spots in the league from ninth place to six after collecting seven points. Liridon Krasniki and Jordan Minta were on the mark for TFC, while Klantan United's goal was netted by Jose Porteria. However, Stein Bruckner reminded his players not to get carried away by the victory, but focus on the match against Klantan FC next Tuesday. Meanwhile, Klantan United coach Thomas Trucha said he accepted the outcome and would turn his focus on the team's next match against Kuching City FC on Tuesday. And in tennis, Italian ten seed Yannick Sinner stunned world number one Carlos Alcaraz 6-7, 6-4, in an epic Miami Open semi-final duel. Sinner needed everything in his arsenal to beat the defending champion in a rematch of their Indian Wells semi-final and delivered with more than two dozen winners to set up a meeting with Russian Daniel Medvedev in the final. Up a break in the first set, the 10 seed brought the crowd to its feet when he survived an extraordinary 25-shot rally in the seventh game, sending Alcaraz flailing to the ground with a sensational backhand winner. They traded breaks in the final two games of the set and Alcaraz closed the tie break with an ace. However, the Spaniard could not hang on to the momentum and he seeded Sinner in a breakpoint with a wild shot out of bounds in the opening game of the second set. Alcaraz broke Sinner on the third try in the fourth game but was scathed in the effort, landing hard on his left hand. The incident took its toll as Sinner broke Alcaraz to love in the ninth game, ending the US Open champion's 21-set unbeaten streak. In the third set, Sinner converted on a breakpoint chance in the opening game and Alcaraz was left wincing as he suffered another fall onto his left hand while diving for a serve in the sixth game. Sinner converted on another breakpoint in the penultimate game to seal the victory. He will next face Medvedev, who survived a stern test from his friend and fellow Russian, Karen Kachanov.
Max Verstappen took pole position for Red Bull at the Australian Grand Prix after teammate Sergio Perez came crashing back to earth with a brake failure that left him last on the grid. Mercedes driver George Russell joins Verstappen on the front row for Sunday's race at Albert Park after qualifying second ahead of teammate Lewis Hamilton. Verstappen saved his best for late, roaring around the lakeside circuit in 1 minute and 16.732 seconds, over two tenths of a second quicker than Russell. Hamilton was thrilled Mercedes had bridged the pace to Red Bull, who won both the opening races in the Middle East. Perez, who endured a nightmare final practice, locked up breaking into turn three during his first outlap in the opening session and beat himself in gravel, bringing his qualifying to a quick end. Twice world champion Fernando Alonso of Aston Martin will start fourth on the grid ahead of fifth place Carlos Sainz. Sainz's Ferrari teammate Charles Leclerc will light up seven behind sixth place Lance Stroll of Aston Martin. Alex Albon will be in eight on the grid after a positive day for Williams. Ahead of Alpine's Pierre Gasly, ninth, and Haas's Nico Hulkenberg. Home fan hopes of a big race from McLaren's local boy, Oscar Piastri, were dashed as he narrowly missed the cut into Q2 and starts 16 on the grid. Kecemasan boleh saya bantu? Hello, there's been a motorcycle accident here. Maybe an elephant ran it over? <laughs> Sir, there is fire accident at the address number 5 Jalan Timbika, Shah Alam. PGO from FRT Shah Alam, there was no fire accident here. Over. Merce 999. Use it wisely. And wrapping up Belize tonight with a reminder of our leading story, Belize secures 170 billion ringgit worth of investment commitment from China. Do join us again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. for your daily stories. And on behalf of our English news team and in conjunction with RTM 77th anniversary, we would like to extend our gratitude to you for your never-ending support. Till then, I'm Brendan Paul. Take care.